I've been living my whole life in fear. In fear that I would disappoint my parents, that I would not live up to the grades and the degrees that I got in college. I was living in fear of people's judgment. I was living in fear of being different. But once I started realizing that all the power is within myself, that anything I want in life, I don't need to worry about others judging my self-worth. But the only person that can judge where I want to go in life and my own personal self-worth is myself. Not a boss, not my family, not the judgment of my friends and peers and coworkers. And once I overcame that fear, I realized that I was limitless and I was able to do anything I wanted to do. Everybody doubts themselves, everybody second guesses themselves and I doubted myself and I second guessed myself just as much as any other person. But I'd say the difference is no matter what, I knew that I needed to be moving out of my current situation. I went to an event. At that event, I had an epiphany. I created a new vision of myself. And what happened is every day I went to work after that event. Every day I went to work, I felt like I was living an alternative life because in my mind, I already had a new vision for myself already created. And that new vision of myself was that I was free. So every day I went into work, I felt in limbo and I didn't feel like I belonged there. I don't know if you've ever felt like you don't belong somewhere, but for me, that was every single day. That kept me focused because if you're somewhere where you don't feel you are, you belong. If you're in a situation where you don't feel is correct for you, if you feel a sense of unease with what you're doing or who you're surrounded by, if you feel incongruent with yourself, you work very hard to move out of that situation. It's like if you're wearing a piece of clothing that you don't, that's not you. You feel awkward and you feel like people are looking at you awkward and you feel like you don't belong in that shirt or that jacket and you feel that need to get it off. That's what I felt. That's what I felt every day I went to work. It was incredibly uncomfortable. It wasn't just a momentary feeling. It was pervasive. There wasn't really an option. I started noticing that my doubts and my second guessing were my brain playing tricks on me. And I stopped taking them seriously. I realized that my own doubts and that my second guesses were not my own. That those doubts that bubbled up in my brain, those second guesses about my direction, those were actually what society wanted me to think. And I realized those thoughts were not my own. Those thoughts were societies trying to claw me back into the safety net of that structured corporate world that we've been educated on for our entire lives. And once I realized that those doubts were not my own, but they had been educated into my brain by my friends, by my family, by my teachers. I started realizing that I had to move beyond them. And I did. Doubt used to cause me to hold myself back in life and in business. Fears of others' judgments, the judgments of my family, my friends, people I wanted to impress used to hold me back from living the life that I truly deserve. Now, once I learned to control those doubts, once I learned to control those fears of judgments from others, I was able to live a life 
that I truly enjoy. And being able to control your fears and your doubts of judgments of others and society will set you free. In just a second, I'll tell you my story of how I've been able to overcome doubts and the striving to be of perfection in my own self to create a business that makes me millions of dollars per year and living a life that I truly love. So when I first decided that I wanted to quit my job, it was out of anger, right? And it wasn't from like a centered place. I realized I was at a crossroads in my life. And there were kind of two paths I could go on. Is one is I could really just double down on the career route and say, look, I'm gonna make this work. This may not be the right job for me where I'm gonna move up, but I'm gonna double down the career route. I still believe that I can make it work. It's just, this is the wrong job. And the other route was that the only person who could actually pay me what I'm worth is myself and I need to be an entrepreneur. And what helped me make that decision was I kind of projected into the future for each of these routes. I said, if I take route A, where will I be in one, two, five, 10, and 25 years? And I just kind of imagined where my life would go in each of these routes. And what I realized was that that if I took route A and I allowed others to determine my own worth for the rest of my life, that I would never accomplish my dreams. I'd never accomplish my goals. I'd never be given the freedom to experience life in the way I wanted to experience. And I'd be constricted to living and working and even dating and marrying people who were convenient but not actually people I truly connected with on a heart or soul level. I cried thinking about this going down route A, which was working a job for the rest of my life, because I realized that it was so easy, that this was such a realistic scenario for me to actually do. It was not crazy to think that this could be my life and I could always be living on somebody else's terms. You know, but it's so easy to fall into that trap. It freaked the hell out of me. I feel very fortunate to this day that I am not on that path. Whereas I realized route B was scary. Being an entrepreneur and defining my own sense of self-worth, it was scary. But I realized I would live a life of regrets, of constriction, of being on somebody else's term, of being a comfortable slave if I allowed my sense of self-worth and my worth to be determined by somebody else. And at that moment, I made a decision that I can determine my own happiness. I can determine my own freedom. I can determine what I get from this life then the decision was my own. So when I had made the decision not to quit my job, it did not come from fear anymore, but it came from a sense of really knowing myself and knowing where I needed to be. Losing everything I owned was obviously a massive personal setback. In a weird way, it was actually quite liberating because it helped me realize what is truly the most important things in life to me. I didn't think the fire was actually going to come to my house. I didn't think it would actually happen to me. I woke up and the sky was a reddish color, but then it turned black. I noticed the reason the sky turned black was because a tree had just collapsed and sent up a mountain of soot that blacked out the sun. So at that point I realized I had to get out and I had to get out immediately within the next five minutes. The winds were blowing 70 miles an hour. There were ashes flying everywhere. There were embers 
flying everywhere and my neighbor's yard is on fire. Everything I'd accumulated throughout my entire life and my animals were just in my house. This was our, our dream piece of property that we had bought just a few months prior. In the span of three seconds, I had to decide what I could take with me and what I had to leave behind, and I couldn't take much with me. Within that three seconds, my mind started going to what other special things do I need to keep with me? And my mind started going off into some directions. I said, oh, there's some special pictures, maybe my computer, maybe my Xbox. And then it just said, it's all junk. It's all junk. And I need to leave it all behind because I don't have time. But in that three seconds, I had to decide what do I bring with me and what do I not. Really, it came down to my animals. What I realized was at the end of the day, it's really about the people and the animals that you love and the connections that you have in this world and everything else is just kind of temporary. But those connections to your friends or your family or your animals, those can't be sacrificed. Those are the most important things in the world. It's so funny how much time I have spent trying to accumulate that $8,000 couch, that multi-million dollar home, that $2,000 HTC Vive virtual reality setup. It took my house burning down for me to realize that stuff is meaningless. And if you're still in the mindset of trying to accumulate things and money and fancy cars and houses, you're approaching life the wrong way. In a weird way, it was actually quite liberating because it helped me realize what is truly the most important things in life to me, which are family, friends, and the experiences we share together. That's all you really need at the end of the day, and I'm perfectly happy. Have you ever been trapped at your desk or your office or your home hoping, wishing for that two weeks a year of vacation time? I used to, but I've been able to make the transition from working a corporate job to working for myself from anywhere and being able to make millions of dollars per year doing that. Now, in just a second here, I'm gonna tell you my story of how I went from nothing having no technical skills, having no advantages monetarily, and being able to create a business which sustains a life that I love and I'm passionate about. A life where every day is a vacation. Every day I wake up to this view. This is my backyard. I live in Malibu, California, and I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to learn the mindset that it takes to be successful. I believe anyone can create freedom for themselves and live the life they truly dream about. To be the true version of myself, I had to live a life that was not what society had pre-planned for me. So what I attribute most to my success is that in my travels around the world, I realized that I was living an arbitrary life. I realized that if I wasn't setting my own goal for where I wanted to go in life, that the world was going to set one for me and the path that I would be on would not be my own. Now, I've always been a rebel. I've always wanted to do things my own way. When I realized that I was not living my own life, but I was living the life that society wanted for me, that society arbitrarily told me that I should be living. It made me angry inside. It made me furious 
when I realized I was following a path that was just going to lead me to being another number in the system. And from working the corporate world, I also came to the conclusion that there are doors that are closed to you. The corporate world is not set up for you to be the most successful version of yourself that you can possibly be. So when I started realizing that I needed to set my own goals and I needed to define life for myself, that's when I started moving forward in life. So I'd say in a sense it came out of anger that I was not living my own life, that I was living what society wanted for me. That drove me forward to try to be a truer version of myself. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit, but it took me about four years to start working for myself. I'd been trying since 2009 to start my own business and I started a number of businesses and make some money in fits and spurts. Some businesses worked out, some businesses didn't. Some businesses made me money for a few months and then they would just stop working for various reasons. I started probably about a dozen different businesses during those four years, but I could never get anything that was consistent. And it wasn't until 2012, um, August, that I quit my job and I started working for myself full time. And I've never gone back since then. The biggest mistake I see entrepreneurs making is believing they need to do things perfectly, but instead not doing anything at all. I believe people feel this need to be perfect because of society's judgment. There's so much judgment in the world. There's so much judgment on people to start a business and immediately be successful. I, there's so much judgment from society if, of people looking at your Instagram photos. There's so much judgment from society in all aspects of our lives. What I realized was that society's judgment was not me being myself. It was me trying to placate all these different groups of people. And it can get mind numbing when you're trying to advertise something on Facebook, but you have to think about what will your family think? What will your extended family think of that post you do? What will your friends think of you trying to sell a product on Facebook? What will other people that don't know you personally, but you, you'd hope to impress, think of this post you'd put on Facebook or this image you put on Instagram or of this video you put on YouTube? And juggling all these different groups whose judgment I was worried about, it just felt like a thousand pound rock in my chest. But what I realized was that those thoughts weren't my own. They'd been implanted in me. And those judgments were not even their own. Those judgments that you can't have a tattoo, you can't have a nose ring, you can't put out a video on YouTube selling a product, you can't put up a website selling you know, some random stuff. I realized that those fears, I realized that that fear of judgment was not my own thoughts. They were somebody else's thoughts. And that those thoughts of those other people were somebody else's thoughts before them. They'd been implanted in their brains. And that the only true way to live life is really just be yourself and not allow society's judgments to filter in and affect your brain. How do I stay motivated for four years to keep trying my own business? Well, um, 
One of my favorite books is The Alchemist. And in The Alchemist, they call it beginner's luck. And I'd say in the beginning, I, there was a, there was a, biz, a few businesses I started, uh, one particular business where I made a little bit of money uh, right away. And once I got that taste of being able to work for myself and that, that sort of inner pride of being able to make money and being in control of my own income rather than having to work a job for $8 an hour, it, it was, it was just super addicting. It was really pleasurable. I remember distinctly I made, uh, I made $400. The first time I made $400 in a day, I was, uh, I was tutoring. I was selling a, a particular type of tutoring service at my college and I made $400 and I was like, whoa. I only get paid $7 an hour working at the movie theater. And that was really invigorating. So I said, this is more than I make in two weeks from working at the movie theater. I need to figure out how to be more of an entrepreneur. It just, it got me addicted. So that first little success really kept me going because it showed me what is possible. And I believe when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, getting that first taste of success is something to really strive for. And it's really important to do a business where you can make money fast and easily. One thing that really motivated me to keep going through this period was surrounding myself with people that motivated me, frankly. Surrounding myself with people that motivated me, kept me going because I saw what they were achieving. And even if I didn't talk to them often, even if I just met them briefly at an event, hearing about their life and hearing about what they accomplished and seeing that they were a real person, they're not a genius, not a kid that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, seeing real people getting real results for themselves that I wanted out of my life helped keep telling me, you can do this, you can do this too. And it made it real because you can read about it on the internet. You can see it in a newspaper or a magazine or a book or YouTube, but it's not real unless you're actually like hanging out with these people, you know? And I'd say just seeing like, oh, they're not geniuses. You don't need to be a genius to do this. How I defined success for myself was really, I just looked all around me on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and I saw so many people living lives of freedom and luxury and fun and adventure. And I said, I wanted to live that life too. I want to be doing those things that those people are doing. So when I started, my goal was not grand, but it was something. And it was living a life of fun, of freedom, and of adventure. I created my entire business around an internet business that would allow me to have freedom and control over my own time and freedom and control over where I was or my location. Society does not want to give you control over your own time, over your own location. Society and the corporate world wants you to be a slave. The corporate world, the capitalistic system wants to control you just as it wanted to control me. And when I realized that I was not living my own life, I was furious because I'm not a slave. I'm not beholden to anybody. And that fury drove me to carve out a life for myself and to ultimately create my internet business to allow me to do anything that I wanted with utter freedom. 
And that freedom has opened so many doors for me in life to create relationships and to experience the world and to build new skills. It's been unbelievable. And where I'm at now compared to where I was five years ago is night and day. Where I was once dressing up in a corporate suit and driving an hour each day, each way to go to work. Working for a company selling products that I didn't even fully believe in. Hanging out with people every day that I won't even normally be friends with. Ultimately, going home every single night dissatisfied with who I was, was where I was five years ago. Compared to where I am today, every day I wake up with a blank slate. Every day is a new day for me to decide where I want to go, what I want to be, what I want to do, whether it's in my personal life or my business, it doesn't matter. And that freedom is invigorating. And today, it's my new normal. And I believe it should be everybody's normal. Success loves speed. Keeping that momentum going is the most important thing when you start making money in business. And for me, when I was able to go full time when working for myself and running my own business, it just, it just opened the floodgates. Instead of having to only be able to work nights on my internet business, I had the whole day. And for me at the time, I, I, had, I had very few friends. I didn't have a girlfriend, I didn't have a family, and I had very few things or responsibilities. So I guess in one sense I did have an advantage because I had all the time in the world, but I also had a lot of opportunities to spend my time in other ways. I could have, I could have been chasing girls, I could have been going to the clubs, I could have been going to bars and getting drunk, I could have been smoking weed, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs who once they start working for themselves, you know, they'll get drunk during the day, they'll smoke weed in the morning, they'll travel around the world full time and not work on their business, or they'll, they'll be dating lots of girls, and they lose sight of actually creating momentum in their business. Creating momentum in your business is actually, I'd say, one of the most important things. Once you start earning money, keeping that momentum going as hard as you can is paramount. I kept that going. The first year in business, I did $300,000. My second year in business, I did close to a million. My third year in business, I did close to three million. So my momentum, every single year I almost tripled what I did the previous year. Every year since then I've done nothing less than a million dollars in my business. But I would have never gotten to that point if I had allowed myself, when I was 25 years old, making 300,000, if I had allowed myself to start getting a big ego and saying, I'm going to hang out at bars, I'm going to go to clubs, I'm going to forget about my responsibilities and travel full time but not tend to my business because it was a very easy and very real opportunity for me to have and do. I could have just been dating girls and traveling the world and being a socialite. But I didn't. I kept momentum in my business and if you're trying to take your life to the next level, momentum is the most important thing. Oh, that fucking asshole. That's what I was thinking. I was bulletproof. I practiced in the mirror like all this time. And my heart just dropped. It just went... Mm -hmm.
In my mind, everything I had worked up to and came up to this point, I'd gotten good grades in high school, I'd taken the APs, I went to a great college. I had all the right majors, business, marketing. Everything I'd done, I'd gotten a good job, I switched out for a better job, and I did everything correct in my job, and I was moving up and I was doing everything, I was helping the company grow. I felt pretty confident going in because I felt like I had a bulletproof case for asking for a raise. So I went in, I had, you know, a little sheet prepared of, you know, just kind of some numbers and some charts and uh, some of the some of the actual data that I was going to reference. And I went in and I made my sh spiel, which was short. I thought I kept it good and open-ended. I didn't ask for a firm amount. I said, hey, I'd look like either a raise or some sort of incentive plan moving forward so that I can be on track to earn six figures. His answer was the one answer I actually hadn't prepared for, which wasn't really an objection, but what he said was, or what? He was just being an a-hole. What that question meant to me, because he was saying, you want to raise, or what are you going to do? And what I felt like he was asking me to do is actually put my balls on the line and say, or I'm quitting. I don't think that was his intention. The way I interpreted his response, or what? I felt he was forcing me to say, is the job path for you? Or do you have to go a different route? I want to give my boss a month notice, so I gave myself 60 days to say, I'm out. Whether or not I had the income to support going out on my own. I knew I had to do it and I knew I just had to really just resolve it in that moment and just move forward because otherwise I'd create too many obstacles to keep myself comfortable. Being an entrepreneur and defining my own sense of self-worth, it was scary. But I realized I would live a life of regrets, of constriction, of being on somebody else's term of being a comfortable slave if I allowed my sense of self-worth and my worth to be determined by somebody else. And at that moment, I made a decision that I can determine my own happiness. I can determine my own freedom. I can determine what I get from this life. But once I had that goal in mind, you see, I was able to problem solve my way to get there. You don't need to let anybody else determine what you're worth or where you're going in life, that you have full control of that. And it doesn't need to be a boss, a teacher, or even a relationship you're in. You determine where you're going in life. You alone have all of the power in the world to figure this stuff out for yourself. You're in a prison of your own mind. What you fear is not real. And it's really bitching over on this other side. You can truly make it happen. No money has to come out of your pocket for ad spend or nothing. He shows you the true and legit way to start your marketing campaigns with no money. Hi there, my name is Phil Carrick from Northern Ireland and I just want to give a big shout out to John Cristani. What John does is he walks you through a step-by-step -step process, really from A to Z. Hi, my name is Demetrius. I basically uh, started using his tactics yesterday and already started seeing results. Uh, after going through the program, I made my first commissions uh, basically yesterday. John Cristani, thank you so much for access to your program. It is powerful, and I hope your students uh, and people actually uh, 
get in and they'll see they'll, they'll be able to understand what I'm talking about okay so thank you again and I appreciate everything that you put out